Hello everyone, welcome back to Pharmacy Made Easy. Today let's see the ninth part of multiple choice questions for pharmacist competitive examination. And all you know that the GPAT exam dates has been announced and the exam date is January 24, 2020. So start preparing from today itself so that you can easily qualify in GPAT examination. Here we start our ninth part of multiple choice question series. First question adverse effects of opioid analgesics do not include option a diarrhea option b emesis option c urinary retention and option d respiratory depression we know opioid analgesic these are mainly used for relieving severe pain for example in case of terminal stages of cancer so this opioid analgesic this will mainly act by binding to various receptors present in brain and these receptors these are called as opioid receptor and main categories of opioid receptor include mu kappa and delta and when this opioid analgesics this bind to the receptor opioid receptor present in the brain they will block the brain's ability to perceive the pain as a result they can effectively reduce the sensation of pain the main example of opioid analgesic that include morphine codeine methadone etc one of the major antagonist of this opioid receptor that is naloxone as you know then the major adverse effect of this opioid that include nausea and vomiting then the second one they can also cause urinary depression they also cause sedation then hallucination confusion dry mouth etc and coming to our bowel movement this opioid analgesics i already said they will block the receptors present in the central nervous system as a result they will block the ability of brain to handle the pain signals so there are other functions which are coordinated by our brain one of the one of such function that is controlling of our bowel function so as a result of blocking of or depression of this central nervous system they will leads to decreased bowel movement so as a result they will cause constipation not diarrhea here the correct answer is option a diarrhea usually opioid analgesics cause constipation not diarrhea and in case of opioid toxicity the death may occur mainly due to this respiratory depression second question which of the following drug is most useful for treating hypercalcemia in Paget's disease option a raloxifen option b fluoride option c pemidronate and option d teleparatide Paget's disease that is a disease characterized by excessive bone resorption and also this is characterized by poorly organized bone formation and hypercalcemia. In Paget's disease our body's normal bone demineralization process that is altered or we can call it as it is impaired that cause our bones to become more weaker or to become more fragile and the main drugs used for treating the hypercalcemia or for treating the Paget's disease that include bisphosphonate and calcitonin and bisphosphonate that can be mainly used in order to strengthen the bone and bisphosphonate and calcitonin these are the first line treatment in case of Paget's disease an example for bisphosphonate include alendronate, etidronate Pemidronate etc. So here the correct answer is option C. Pemidronate. Pemidronate that is a bisphosphonate used parenterally to treat hypercalcemia in Paget's disease. Third question. Which of the following drug is the most effective treatment for malignant hypothermia? Option A. Atropine. Option B. Dandrolin. Option C. Vecuronium. And option D. Succinylcholine. Malignant hypothermia as the name indi as the name indicates hyperthermia that means increased temperature. So that is 
increase in body temperature and this malignant hypothermia that is a condition that triggers a severe reaction in response to certain drugs and usually characterized by dangerously increased body temperature severe muscle spasm and a fast heart rate and prompt treatment is essential for malignant hypothermia in order to control the body temperature and also this malignant hypothermia that can leads to acidosis so this treatment that will also helps to correct the acidosis now let's see how this malignant hypothermia occurs so this malignant hypothermia the main drugs which are responsible for causing the malignant hypothermia that include first one certain gaseous or volatile anesthetics like halothane and also by depolarizing muscle relaxants for example succinylcholine decamethonium and succinylcholine these drugs that cause increased risk of calcium within the muscle cell so as a result of this increased calcium level within the cell cause muscle fiber to contract that will generate excessive heat and results in metabolic acidosis usually the drugs which will be used for this malignant hypothermia will be the drugs which will prevent this calcium level increase the main treatment aim for this malignant hypothermia include first one to control the body temperature second one to correct the acidosis and the third one to prevent the calcium release the main treatment strategies for controlling this malignant hypothermia that is the use of the drug dantrolin and also we can use some supportive cooling methods so this dantrolin this dantrolin that will binds to rhinodin receptors present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell so this rhinodin receptors that will be present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle cell and this dantrolin that will binds to this rhinodin receptor and thereby prevent the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which will prevent the tension generating interaction between the actin and myosin fibers we know actin and myosin that are mainly responsible for the muscle contraction so this dantrolin that we know that's a peripherally acting muscle relaxant so that will directly act on the muscle fiber and as a result they will inhibit the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum so as a result that can be used for the treatment of malignant hypothermia so here the correct answer is option b dantrolin fourth question mesna is used to relieve the side effects of option a methotrexate option b 5 fluorouracil option c cyclophosphamide and hydroxyurea mesna this is a drug that is mainly used to reduce the risk of bleeding in the bladder that is called hemorrhagic cystitis which is a very serious side effect of the treatment with a cancer chemotherapy drug that is cyclophosphamide so here the correct answer is option c cyclophosphamide mesna is used to relieve the side effects of the chemotherapeutic drug cyclophosphamide and mesna helps to protect the lining of the bladder against the damage from the drug cyclophosphamide the cyclophosphamide that is the drug which is mainly used in case of the treatment of cancer chemotherapy and the cyclophosphamide that will metabolize into the urotoxic metabolites acrolein and 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide and the mesna reacts chemically with these metabolites resulting in their detoxification that is making it less toxic and as a result that can inhibit the toxicity associated with cyclophosphamide that's why mesna is mainly used for preventing the bleeding in the bladder so this hemorrhagic cystitis that is one of the major side effect of this cyclophosphamide to prevent this urotoxic side effect we are administering mesna along with this cyclophosphamide so here the correct answer is option c cyclophosphamide 
फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन मेजर साइड इफेक्ट ऑफ मेथफॉर्मिन इंक्लूड ऑप्शन ए लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस ऑप्शन बी एग्रेनुलोसाइटोसिस एंड ऑप्शन सी रीनल फेलियर एंड ऑप्शन डी हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया metformin we know that is a biguanide that is mainly used as an oral hypoglycemic agent and it is mainly an insulin sensitizer that means they lower the blood sugar by improving the target cell response to insulin without increasing the pancreatic insulin concentration among the option one of the major side effect of metformin that is lactic acidosis and this side effect the lactic acidosis that is a rare side effect of metformin although it is one of the serious side effect of metformin and it can usually precipitate in patient who are having the renal failure lactic acidosis that means there will be small increase in blood lactate level when we are using metformin and this occurs usually in case of metformin overdose and also with acute renal failure like insulin and other hypoglycemic drugs like glipizide and glibaglamide metformin doesn't cause hypoglycemia because this metformin that is mainly acting as a insulin sensitizer so here the correct answer is option a lactic acidosis this is all about today's presentation today you have seen five multiple choice question and go through this question and i already said start preparing from today itself for gpat examination and if you have any doubt you can comment it in the comment box given below and thank you for watching this channel and if you like this channel don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you